Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to the ESL Pro Tour Europe Weekly. I'm Nathanius. Today is July 13th. Oh no, spooky 13th, but it's not Friday. It's Monday, and you know what that means. We got some StarCraft action coming at you in the northeast of Everdream. We have the Blue Zerg player. He is Sotov. He faces off against the Red Terran player, the Cutie Patootie in the Southwest. He is Liquid's Clem. And of course, if you guys follow eGaming, then you should definitely have heard about Clem. He's been playing pretty fantastically recently. We've been able to see a pretty significant amount of him in the uh, DreamHack Summer Masters. He has a really good series. Unfortunately, was not able to claw out the winner bracket. Uh, lost to Serral and then lost to Raynor in the loser bracket. Raynor would go on to actually pick up. I think it was second place. I think I think Serral still ended up winning the upper bracket. Maybe I'm crazy. Maybe it was Raynor that won the upper bracket for Europe. I'm really bad. No, actually, it was Raynor. It was Raynor. Raynor beat Serral in the rematch. Everybody in chat is posting, correcting me in the five seconds before I, I remembered... I'm like, I watched the interview. I watched the interview. I remembered Cyril's tweet. Cyril made a tweet afterwards. Um, I'm not bad. I'm not a bad caster, okay? I just have a bad memory. That's all you need to know. Not all of us can be like Rotterdam. Honestly, feel like every time that Rotterdam looks into a mirror, he doesn't he doesn't talk about how handsome he is, right? That's too on the nose. It's too obvious. When Rotterdam looks in the mirror, he just says to himself, he's like, Mate, do I even remember what happened at the last StarCraft tournament they cast? And then he probably goes through all the results over and over again until they're permanently ingrained in his mind, which is how he literally never forgets anything, which I consider cheating. But that's just me. That is just me. You know, that is that is really just me. So here's the Reaper coming out for Clem. And we know that Terran right now has a lot of options for playing against Zerg in the early game. The Zerg players have had the fear of God put into them by all the different strategies that have been popping up on the ladder lately. I am interested to see if Clem's going to break out anything strange or crazy for this series. If we're going to have like um, mech, if we're going to have like really good mech stuff going on, if we're going to have, I don't even, some cheese, or if Clem is going to do like his... It's early in the tournament. I'm going to just save everything. Use some pretty standard schmandard builds and just try and clap. Um, that sort of is a competent opponent. He's not a bad Zerg player by any means. So that's not, it's not going to be easy regardless of whatever it is that he does try to do. This Reaper with two kills sharking around would love to get a deny on the creep tumor. Those are always really big, but that one's going to be able to finish up. Now, Link's speed is close, but not too close. He should be able to get home if he wants to. Yeah, that Reaper is going to be able to unite with the Hellions and now continue to try applying pressure. Sorry, I was checking my FPS in the top left for those of you curious. And here the Hellions with that Reaper do come along. There's the grenade. Boop. Onto the queen. He's going to grab a few of those zerglings. Then coming up the ramp. I mean, he's really not getting a lot of damage done here. I think he was really hoping to also scout with this. But what's interesting is that in the midst of all of this, sort of is going to add a decent extra bit of links because the Reaper and the Hellions are still annoying. And actually, two more Hellions do just kind of straight to do just kind of come straight up to the front. So I like the decision to add a couple more zerglings in there, but. It's going to end up hindering the drone count if he's not careful. Throws the Reaper Grenade. Not able to get the drone kill there. That would have been really sick for Clem. Man, you know, he's so aggressive with the way that he has uh, moved with these Hellions. He's going to go for Hellion Banshee. That's how you know he's trying to hide his good strategies because there are no good builds versus Zerg that involve Cloaked Banshees. Not in this metagame. Um, as these Hellions are going to try and get the creep cleared up. Man, Hellions doing bonus damage to creep as a mecking Terran is like... Basically one of the greatest things that's ever happened in my whole entire life. Nathan, is that something to be proud of? I'm not going to look a gift horse in the mouth. I'm happy about it. That's all. That's all. So the cloak actually ends up being useful. This spore crawler is so late. Like this spore was so late. The Banshee getting five drones, even if it immediately dies, is still really nice. I mean, I would, yeah, yeah. Spank the queens, spank the queens, kill a Zergling. 
kill a creep tumor and kill that queen. Oh, I like the Hellions actually came by and roasted another drone too. Meanwhile, the Banshee's like, I, I'm heading out. Of course, doesn't even necessarily need to do that. But like a lot of Terran players have been doing a really good job of retaining their Hellions, if that makes sense. You could kill the creep tumor by shooting the rocks from one of those high ground spots, which I would also love to see. I would love to see that. Because he's just kind of sharking around looking for opportunity that doesn't exist. These two Banshees are going to try and go in tandem, but you've got a queen and a spore crawler, which shouldn't really let too much go down there. He doesn't really have like a threatening number of Zerglings. These Banshees did come in and grab a couple of drones, three of them to be precise. Pretty good, actually. This multi-prong has not been bad at all. I didn't think he was going to be able to do damage with the Spore and the Queen there. There are Zerglings waiting at the third, though. Most of them get cooked. He can turn his eyes to the drones pretty soon here. Yeah. Oh, this is a lot of cooking. A lot of barbecue over at the third base of sort of. He's getting a ton of damage done. I mean... He just kind of been bringing this relentless Hellion aggression while he transitions into bio. And I do feel like a lot of, I was saying earlier, you know, Terrans have been getting a lot better by keeping the Hellions alive. Obviously, that's not the case for this game anymore. But the reason why I say that is it's become quite common to do these types of openers where you do the Hellion pressure, but instead of suiciding them, you kind of let them snowball a bit. And then whenever you're ready to make your first bio push, you just get your armory a little bit earlier and use Hellbats with it, right? And then that's really strong. See, there you go. Um, but he doesn't have the Hellions anymore to add to that. At uh, 69 drones for the mechanical Zerg player. So he, it's not like he's behind on economy. He did take a beating. He rebuilt the economy though. Now the real question becomes, can he get out enough units to defend himself? Because there's only a handful of Banelings. And he's got to deal with 16 stimmed Marines. And they are, they are space Marines with big Gauss rifles that shoot giant spikes of metal at supersonic speeds. So he's gonna step forward, he gets one of the Queens, could go for the Overseer. I would have loved to see him actually try to focus the Overseers and then lift. It definitely could have been, um, could have done a little bit more damage there, but you know what? Considering what happened to sort of earlier, I actually really impressed that he's still going all right. I actually really impressed that he's still okay. Europe is headed home. Have a nice, uh, have a safe drive. Uh, so Clem brings those Marines back here again. And one Baneling gets target fired down. I mean, target firing Banelings, that's the dream. Get, he got another Baneling picked off. Leaves a few Marines to get blown up by a Baneling. So he's actually traded out pretty well against the Banelings. There's still a decent number of them, though. Now, here comes the hard part. We have several siege tanks making their way across. Uh, two to be exact. Excuse me, the third one is lagging behind. Uh, but he has three tanks now. So the goal here is let those tanks blow up the Banelings, have the bio semi spread out, but basically use it to force an engagement. Hydroling Bane can be really hard to deal with. He needs to make sure the tanks shoot the Banelings. So far, he's done a good job. A little bit of a Baneling flank blows up onto a tank, and that is not going to be very good for sort of. He needs to get the Banelings onto the Marines here. He's continuing to stutter step backwards. The tanks need to get that target fire as he runs off creep, and they do. All of the Banelings have been destroyed. Nine more are in production, but... He's still got a lot of Marines in his face. These Hydralisks lack the upgrades necessary to make them competitive in this fight. They do not have range. They do not have speed. They cannot go off creep. And they have the same range as the Marines, which means that they can't really uh, kite or try to put pressure on from afar. This has a big impact on the outcome of the game. He manages to kill quite a few of the Zerglings as he picked off the hatchery. And I do like the Banshees actually were shooting at the Banelings too. I mean, let the Banshees shoot the Banes, right? Let the Banshees shoot the Banes. Sorry. Um, I don't like where that armory is, but that's just me. So this Banshee is going to now, as many of the Queens died in that fight, it's going to put itself between bases and just make things difficult and awkward all around, which I love to see. I can't believe he's actually getting so much value out of it. At the same time, he's trying to push on the east side. We have a lot of lings, but no bane lings here yet. There, there are banes, but there's not a lot. He's going to try and get lurkers. We saw Raynor use a lot of lurkers. I think actually Raynor beat Clem using a ton of lurkers in their series yesterday. But are these tanks going to get the bane lings? It looks like the answer is no. Did get one good shot. The splits, though, 
end up being really solid and he still has a tank alive as well as the medevacs and most of the marines pushing on multiple fronts now is clem hitting from the east side hitting from the north hitting from the east and the north i don't think he can save this hatchery with just zerglings in a hydralis though he tries to get us around the lurkers are protecting the natural but he might just pick up and lift i'm not 100 percent sure and the gg is called out and somebody observing the game called out the gg before uh, literally a second before sort of gg'd out that is interesting that is interesting well that was a that was a brutal game that was an absolutely brutal game right there and uh clem just hitting it out of the park really is what happened clem doing uh super fantastically is all i can say Just waiting for the lobby to get posted to join game two. All right, we're in the lobby for game number two. We're loaded into game two, ladies and gentlemen. I don't know if all the people that were in the game are actually casting, but I'm also not an ESL admin. And as long as people aren't posting weird racist stuff that trying to get onto the stream, I do believe we are okay. In the bottom left, we have the blue Zerg player. He is Sotov. In the Northeast, we have the red... Taren player from Team Liquid. He is Clem. Uh, pot way, way, pawn way, pawn way, way. Pretty sharp attack by Clem. I mean, he, he threw a lot of Hellions in there. That was pretty well done. That was pretty well done play there by uh, Clem in the last map. And sort of. It's hard to get those Lurkers out. It's becoming more and more of a thing that a lot of players um, have been going for in uh, in ZVT. And I think uh, the discussion around uh, actually Rainer beating Clem with Lurkers yesterday was, was kind of an interesting part about it. Like he just has so much. Um, he's had so much to, to swarm him with though and, and get around him and, and be annoying. So we will have to see uh, if he's going to be able to maybe go for some sort of uh, dedicated pressure or an attack that could counter that, like that Hellion Banshee opening, maybe he does something specifically tuned against it. Uh, I don't think that Clem this early in the like a weekly cup is going to be showing us like his greatest builds that he's ever saved up for whatever. Although at the same time, it's a very realistic possibility that Clem just... Actually, you know what? Now that the more that I think about it, the more I realize that it also makes a lot of sense if Clem just does break those builds out because he probably used a lot of them yesterday when they finished up the Europe bracket. And I, However, 
I think it's only in like five or six days. The, uh, the, the playoff bracket starts. So the playoff bracket does start in a couple of days. He's got the SCV blocking the drone from getting the third. This is the easiest map to block the third on because the other possible bases that you could take in this scenario are all really terrible. Like they're actually just bad. You don't want that. Um, and that's just one of those things you're going to have to think about. You're going to have to be really on top of that. Throws the Reaper grenade. He's going to try and boop the queen. Not able to get the creep tumor though. This Reaper has yet to actually kill anything, but he has done a really good job of delaying the placing of that third base thus far. He's continuing to lock it down as it were. If your opponent doesn't want to build lings, like a lot of lings, I don't know why you don't just slap, slam down the engineering bay. Don't just build it. Slam it. Like, come on and slam and welcome to the jam. You know what I mean? Come on and slam if you want to jam. He's also trying to use the fact that the queen is dummy thick to, to block that. Oh, wow. He got the draw. <laughs> Clem. Clem is taking us for a ride. Wow, that was... Okay, if you're a Terran player and you just watched that, he's not floating a thousand minerals behind it because he's a good player. But holy that was awesome. How inappropriate to use a bleep. Yeah, I know. How inappropriate was it for that Reaper to do what it did to that drone? Oh, oof, oof, oof. Liberator though. And I'm gonna guess this will just start stem and he'll go into a very kosher bio build, three CCs. Nothing really that insane. Yeah. Okay. So we got Hellions, Liberator. I do like Liberators on this map. They're really good. Hitting behind the ner the third base mineral line or the natural. These Hellions come over here. They're like, yeah, that hatchery is really late. Hatchery should never be that late versus Terran. The third should just never be at this time. It's really nice for him that he was able to, to cause that delay. And Clem is going to get a third command center up at this front natural wall now. So that makes sense. These are all things we expect to see. Usually, a Zerg player gets that third. Stupid fast. But that is just one of the consequences of playing on this map. Like, this map is just very difficult to uh, deal with. A lot of that type of stuff. Because, like I said, you don't want to take this as your third. It's really far. It's exposed. High ground units can shoot down like aliens and Reapers. At the same time, you don't want to take this base because the minerals are right up against the, the ledge and you can put a Liberator here and just, you know, cut off uh, the ability to mine there permanently. This Zergling was looking for love in all the wrong places and he died. A miserable, painful death. Whatever did happen to the Liberator? Oh, there it is. There it is. Killing some drones. Nice. Go Liberator Kun. It's, uh, there are two queens in the main base and a spore. So it's like you have to be really cautious because he's trying to use the liberator to pull the queens away so that the Hellions can move into a different spot and get damaged. Look at the spread on these things though. Really well done. Oh, pulls into the choke. Gets a nice hit off on those lings. 10 Zerglings killed in this game. Has not lost anything other than the Reaper, which is actually amazing. In fact, I think he's even sending the liberator home to repair it. Oh my God. Is a Terran player going to try and fix their shit? Wow, that's that's the real that's the real highlight of this uh, best of three for me, guys. Send the Hellions home too. Send those units home. Yeah, I I do like sort of, and he's a good player. I think the problem here is that Clem is also like he's kind of peaking, you know. It's like at the start of the Cell Saga, right? Gohan is still a little kid. He doesn't really know how to do anything. Gohan can't go Super Saiyan. So if like sort of showed up to fight Gohan at the beginning of the Cell Saga, then there's a high likelihood that sort of would be able to defeat uh, Gohan. I'm, I'm basically comparing Clem to Gohan in this scenario. But if he shows up later in the Cell Saga, where you've got like a one-armed Super Saiyan Kamehameha shooting Gohan uh, before he gets his arm back, then you know what I mean? Like... Uh, you know, not even Cell could beat him. I, I mean, spoiler alerts from the 90s, but... That's just the way it is, man. That's just the way it is. Clem is... Clem is uh, he is going through his Cell Saga arc as Gohan right now, and it's... Uh, he's strong. He's strong. Of course, he hasn't been able to really beat Cyril yet. But I don't know. I don't know. Maybe Cyril was just Android 18. And we were waiting for Cell, a.k.a. Rainer, to show up. Oh, good bailing hits with those tanks. Oof. Yeah, no, this is just... 
some pretty flawless execution on the part of Clem. Bringing the Liberator back with more harass, like not making it easy for a second. And look at that. Oh, you start your base in front of me? Can't can't even cancel it because he died in the almost the same second that it started, which is about as rough as it gets for a Zerg player because you don't want to have to stare at your own stuff every all the time. I don't think he has enough units here to close the game out, but if sort of makes one mistake and we get like a big tank shot onto all the banelings, then I do think that things fall apart pretty fast. But you've got three base Terran versus a three base Zerg, which is a position that you never want to be in, especially for sort of. And these Zerglings are going to try and finally push everything back. He's hitting him from both sides. But at the same time, while trying to take another base on the Northwest, the other bio contingent force has arrived. And as those links run over with those Bane links, he unloads these two medevacs again. He's got so much on the map. Clem is not giving a single second here for sort of to breathe. And it is so difficult. Do resources spent repairing count towards resources lost? Not until the unit dies, because at that point, all you've done is just make the unit more valuable in a weird roundabout sort of way. But yes, Clem is Gohan confirmed. Yeah. Yeah, he is. Especially because, like, Terran aren't the aliens, right? It'd be weird to try and call anybody else that. Either that or, like, maybe Serral is Bobbity or Bibbity, whatever his name was. And maybe Rainer is Majin Buu. Because, like, at first he wasn't better than Bibbity. But then when he becomes, like, Kid Buu or whatever, you know, he kind of becomes more powerful than everybody else. And then after he eats uh, Vegito, he becomes, like, you know, like, mega unstoppable. I'm not sure. I'm not sure. In that case, Clem can still be Mystic Gohan, right? Like, he can still be... Gohan pre-mystic and post-mystic training. So my analogy still works no matter what. All you really need to know is that I'm never wrong because I have the microphone in my hand and you don't. Um, <laughs> the Lings are going to try and push him here. He is on creep. So the Banelings are able to get some solid detonations. There are a couple of tanks in the back, but uh, not enough of the Marines survived to actually get it done here. And I wonder, Clem, overextending a little bit. I think he can feel that the momentum of this game has done very well for him. But it's only going to get harder now. He's going to need to make some tech transitions. He was actually behind on his upgrades for a little bit. And I didn't even notice that. Like, that was... That's very, very difficult. Uh, yeah. That's actually really, really tricky. I'm not 100% sure. Like, the best way to try and engage an army like this is always going to be either through the skies or with a lot of siege tanks he is building two tanks at a time but like once those lurkers are completely you know fully fledged ready to rock and roll things get very dangerous very quickly double drop of the medevac is going to go into the natural expansion of sort of we only have a single spore crawler covering the left side by the baneling nest which means that this extractor is going to die could possibly have gotten the queen if he tried to stutter step forward for it but he is not able to get it tragically so he steps back and then yeah you're never no no, the lurkers do 20 damage to every unit that they hit in a line. And if eight lurkers do, or seven lurkers, seven times 20, seven times two is 14. Then you add that zero, right? And you're like, oh, 140 damage per attack in, in one space. And your Marines have 50 health, right? That's, that's not a fun spot. Nobody wants to be in that position, guys. Nobody wants that. No, I don't like that. I don't like that. Meanwhile, he's getting a bunch more command centers. I think the hardest part about this game for sort of isn't even that he had to withstand these attacks. It's that he still needs to find a way to actually deal damage back to Clem because this is where Terran is good. Terran is really good at being cost effective, draining you of your resources, putting on a lot of pressure, dealing a lot of damage again, trying to abduct that tank. Yoink. Uh, zoink, Scoob. And just kills the hatchery and steps back. That, that I think, is the ace play right there. Banelings and Lings are going to show up, though. The siege tanks not able to keep the bio alive here. So this is actually a really well-done engagement by Sorta, but it comes in just a little bit too late as he lost that base. And he does still have this one, but he has to remove everything, set all the drones to go back there. A bunch of these guys are actually still long-distance mining, but yeah. Hey, I'm getting mad, but I'm not going to say anything because you're entitled to being not... 100% right at all times. I love you. Oh, I'm just messing with you, Alakiad. 
Clem is trying to fight someone who's way stronger than him. Oh, well, no, I'm just saying that sort of isn't Majin Buu. That's really what I'm trying to say with that analogy, Alakyad. I'm trying to find a relatable way to tell you that Clem is just, uh, generally speaking, a better player than sort of. But it doesn't mean that sort of is bad. It just means that Clem is really hot right now, and he's particularly difficult to stop. Does that does that make more sense? He's just he's just in an un, in an unusually good place in terms of personal ability at the moment. That's all. That's all. You feel old. <laughs> I I don't know. I like my Dragon Ball analogies. Look at this. He's taking every base. He's taking them all. He's building the field of dreams of planetaries. Lurkers are very good against the planetaries, but like, you know, things happen. It at least stops light harass, right? You have to really commit now if you want to break one of these bases, which is why it's so hard because the lurkers, where are they? They're heading up. This, the lurkers are really the only units that can do that, but they're also the best defensive unit that you have for yourself too. Feels like with increased range, Lurker Spine should be slower. I don't know. I think TVZ is in a pretty balanced spot. So I'm like, I don't really think of any changes that need to happen. Maybe versus Protoss, but there's a lot of bio that's going to try and collapse on this. He's wedging the Lurkers next to the production. That is scary. He's going to get rid of one of them. But like you need to have, you need to have like ranged Liberators or a lot of Ghosts. The thing about Ghosts is they actually don't outrange the Lurkers. Ghosts used to outrange lurkers, but they don't anymore. So, oh my god, the tank shot the Hydra, not the lurker. No! But yeah, unless, as long as you can see the ghost, you can attack it. Because Snipe does not have a longer range than the lurker. It's like 10 seconds to, to, to use Snipe, or 10 range to use Snipe. And the lurker has 10 range. So the lurker can almost always cancel Snipe if it shoots at it. Which is why you need to have fodder units or other stuff to distract. Oh, don't lose your fusion core. Don't lose your fusion core. There is your liberator range. Give your liberators gains. I think he's just building a ton more lurkers. Adding extra vipers. This is a good play by sort of though. I like this a lot. This style Terran's been struggling against. But he scans and he's like, oh, you don't have those bases and I do. I have these bases and you don't. That's that's a good spot to be in for the, for the Terran player. Especially as he gets the ghost count up. And he can start to maybe mix in a little bit of cloak shenanigans. Actually, there it is. Personal cloaking being researched for the ghosts now if you can get rid of the overseers because those are going to overextend a lot more easily than the rest of the lurkers you can really get a lot done you know that's all you can get a lot it's just it is just you know it's not as simple as just queuing up snipes anymore sort of does have a lot of lurkers though it's just hard to put them in a position where they can do everything they need to. There is, there's a big siege up. But here's, here's the question though, right? The Hydras, there's not really Hydralisks here. Oh, see the ghosts. The ghosts with their sniper are actually not in range. They, they get their attacks tonight. Do you see what I'm saying? You actually can't snipe lurkers like that. It doesn't work. See, I just, I literally just talked about this for five minutes. Everybody in chat got super bored. And then they were like, oh wait, Nathanius, you're actually a genius. Yeah, I know. I know. Which is why you need ranged liberators. And then you basically just protect them with the... Yeah, see, no. You can't. Two of them do manage to snipe. Hard part is it actually takes two snipes to kill a lurker. So this is, this is why I'm, like, actually so nervous. Now, using the cloak, that's actually a really good way to do it. There we go. Use the cloak. The overseer couldn't... Actually, the Overseer might have been able to see that. I don't know. No, the ghosts were like right there, weren't they? They were just outside the view. But he's going to have to either push the ramp and lose everything or make some more sick plays. Gets another snipe. It's hard to get those snipes off. The army's clumping a little bit. You don't want to lose this base. This is a good spot to fight over. He cleaned up. Oh, there's a ranged liberator on the base on the right. Oof. Look at you go, Lurker. You send those subterranean spines everywhere. You send them all. 
DBZ analogy. Sort of is basically Krillin fighting Vegeta. He shouldn't win most of the time, but at the moment, Krillin's friend just died. So he gets a plot related power boost. Uh, I think Sort of's better than Krillin. When I think of guys that are like, like, the thing about Krillin is he actually has no real power, right? Like, as much as people make fun of Krillin, like, Yamcha is not that far off from him. And in fact, in many arcs, Krillin is infinitely more useful and powerful than Yamcha, as he's actually capable of fighting against guys like the Ginyu Squad and whatnot. So, I don't know. I guess I wouldn't say that it's like a massive diss to be called Krillin, but at the same time, we do have a, a game going on in front of us, and this east side base is going to get completely ravaged. Really good use of the tandem blinding cloud hydralisk lurker play. He wants to wedge himself on the production again since the entire army focused on the west side. And this is where things get really scary because it's all about making sure that he doesn't siege those lurkers on the barracks. Because if he does, it's going to be almost impossible to bring anything back. Really good splits on the ghost banelings. Do not do bonus damage to them. So that's actually going very nicely for him. Liberator on the high ground going pew pew. There is just a handful of lurkers left. The Liberator's not been targeting them down though because they've been focusing on units that are actually uh, capable of shooting up. That's just how the AI works. Now, he is trying to finally force this ramp. He gets the natural command center. A lot of ghosts are going down to the lurkers at the same time. It's not enough because Clem just had a little bit too much. And he had basically infinite money with the way this game was played. GG, well played. 2-0 victory for the Liquid Terran.